Thank you for joining me here today for another episode of the Queen of Your Castle podcast. Before we get into it, I just wanted to let you know super duper quickly that we are heading into another round of enrollment for your stepmom story. So if you have not yet jumped onto the wait list for that, you can go to bit.ly slash queen waitlist. That is bit.ly slash queen waitlist. Where would you take your life if you knew you could not fail? I get it. As a stepmom, mom, and entrepreneur, sometimes it can feel like what everyone else expects of you versus what you dream about for yourself are on opposite ends of the spectrum. As a woman, you're taught from a very young age what society thinks you're worth based on how you look, how you behave, and how much money you're allowed to bring in. But I'm here to show you that you can be the woman who has it all and not just on the outside. I'm Brittany Lynch, and you are the queen of your castle. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Queen of Your Castle podcast. I am your host, Brittany Lynch. Thank you for joining me here today. Thank you for investing some time in your beautiful self, in your step family, in your happiness, in your peace. What a beautiful gift. What a beautiful gift you're giving yourself to take some time for yourself. So we're just going to have actually a super short little episode today as I would really like to invite you to take an opportunity to do some introspection and self-reflection. So even though I won't be talking as much as I typically talk on episodes, you will still be able to have an opportunity to invest some time in yourself, in your step family, in your happiness, in your peace this week. You know, as much as I believe that it's wonderful for people to consume content, and as much as I love getting your messages about how much the podcast is helping you, I also notice sometimes and at least especially with myself, that I can get really swept up in consuming other people's content, whether that's reading blog posts or listening to other people's podcasts or reading books or getting more Audible credits or taking more courses, right? Whatever it might look like for me that day to be consuming other people's content. And sometimes I find that when I choose to consume content, read, listen to podcasts, listen to Audible, when I choose to consume content instead of create it, or when I choose to keep adding more knowledge to my brain instead of taking what I know and using it and applying it, or when I choose to take another new course instead of practicing the skills that I have, I've noticed that sometimes, almost all of the time, I use the excuse of needing to learn more so that I can actually avoid the fear and the uncertainty involved with doing the actual work. And when I first became a stepmom coach, I just kept taking more and more and more courses. I kept thinking that I needed to add on more qualifications, learn how to facilitate meditation and breath work and energy work, or learn this new coaching technique, or learn more and more and more about step families. I kept saying like, well, when I know this thing, then I'll actually be qualified enough to coach other step moms. But I'd get more certifications and I would keep delay delaying putting myself out there to actually work with clients. And the truth was that I was using this guise, right? I was saying I need more knowledge, 
but really it was an excuse to keep myself from working with clients because I was scared, right? I was scared that I actually didn't know enough to be able to help stepmoms. So when I chose to keep taking all of these courses and certifications, I was really doing it from a place of fear. I didn't want to get it wrong. I didn't want to mess up, right? And in my mind, at least the lie that I was telling myself was that I was doing what I needed in order to be able to do a good enough job. But looking back, I was procrastinating. I was delaying. And I was able to keep myself safe by hiding. Because what good was all of that knowledge? What good was all of that training and all of those courses? What good was all of that knowledge inside of my brain if I was never actually using it to help other stepmoms? You know, how many courses did I need to have completed before I was confident that I was ready? I was actually looking at entering a master's program which I mean, I still might do, but I was like, well, you should take a master's in this first before you start working with stepmoms. Even though I already had a bachelor's degree, even though I already had a counseling designation, even though I had had about a bazillion and one courses and certifications under my belt, I still ended up convincing myself that I needed a master's before I'd be ready. And you know what? If I hadn't changed the way I think about this, I probably would have gone to master's and then been like, well, I need a PhD now, right? I'm not going to be ready till I have a PhD. So in other words, you know, when would I finally know enough to be able to make this leap from knowing enough to practicing what I did know? When would I finally be good enough to put myself out there and be vulnerable, right? And do the scary thing so that I could really start to make a difference and help the women who needed helping. When would I actually start doing the things I said I was going to do instead of hiding behind another book? And don't get me wrong, you know, one of the reasons I love being an entrepreneur is that it gives me the freedom and the opportunity to be a lifelong learner. I love school. I'd go to school for the rest of my life if I could. I love learning new tools and new modalities. And I really honestly, truthfully, with everything inside of myself, believe that we never finish growing as humans. And I believe that stagnation and complacency are two of the biggest enemies of humankind. We were put on this earth to keep growing. And there's nothing wrong with wanting more freedom or wanting more happiness or wanting more purpose or wanting more passion, wanting more peace, right? There's nothing wrong with that. It's the human condition to want more, to want better. It's the way that we were designed. (laughs) It's the way that we are. But something I've noticed for myself is that when I say I'll be ready to do this after I learn a few more things, what I'm really saying is I'm afraid, right? I'm afraid to do the thing. I'm afraid to be rejected. I'm afraid to be vulnerable. I'm afraid to put myself out there. I'm afraid. What I'm saying is that I already know. I already know what I should be doing. I already know how to do the thing, but I don't want to do it, right? I don't want to do it. So I'm just going to say I need another course. And learning more, something I've like come to realize and observe is that learning more, needing to know more, is a socially acceptable way to avoid doing the thing, right? Like what good is adding more knowledge to your brain if you never take the opportunity to practice what you've learned? What good is reading a million books about swimming if you're too scared to go to the pool? What good is reading a million cookbooks if you never step foot in the kitchen? What good is listening to a thousand hours of stepmom podcasts if you never implement what you have learned so far? And something I've noticed throughout my work with stepmoms is that a lot of the time, stepmoms will get stuck in this sort of hamster wheel of thinking that they're going to be able to find the answers. It's kind of like this elusive pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, right? I just need one more blog post or one more podcast or one more book about step families and then I'll be able to make some changes. I just need to learn a little, a few more things. I just need to read some more. I just need to consume some more content and then I might be ready to make some changes. Then I might be ready to make myself vulnerable and tell my partner what I need, right? And if this is resonating with you, then I'll tell you from experience 
the answer is not going to be found in any more information. And I know this probably sounds counterintuitive because I'm telling you this due to the fact that you are consuming more content. But this episode, like I said, is going to be sort of a break from my regular style of episode where I give you the information. And instead, I'm going to invite you to do some journaling or reflecting on a few questions that may be able to answer some questions for you, right? The questions that answer the questions. I believe that you probably already know everything that you need to know. I believe that you probably already know what you need to do in order to be the happiest stepmom in the whole dang world. But when will you get into the pool? Right? When will you get into the kitchen? When will you be ready to do the scary thing and say, this is what I need in my relationship? Or this is what I need in my extracurricular life, right? Or this is what I need in my role as a stepmom. This is what I need. When are you gonna be ready to take that scary step and make yourself vulnerable and say, this is what I need? So if you're not driving, then I would invite you to grab a pen and a notebook and spend some time reflecting on these questions that answer the questions. If you are driving, then of course, come back. This will be here forever. I'll be here forever. So come back when you're not driving. So here are the questions. Number one is, if I could paint a picture of my perfect day, what would that look like? What would I see? What would I smell? What would I hear? What would I taste? What would I feel? If I could paint a picture of my perfect day. Okay. Try and use all of your senses so you can really imagine yourself there. Second question is, what is preventing me from living out my perfect day? Okay. What is preventing? What is preventing you from living out your perfect day? The third question is going to be, if I could get a message, if I could get a message from myself in the future, what would I hope that my future self told me about my future life? Okay, so you're getting a message from yourself in the future. What do you want your future self to say to you right now about what's about to come in your life? Number four is if I could give a message to my past self, what would I tell my past self? Okay. Number four, if I could give a message to my past self, what would I tell my past self? And number five, am I allowing the fear of the unknown to keep me stuck in a place that I know could be improved? If so, why? If not, then how will you commit to improving something just a little tiny bit today? So really spend some time with those questions. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, this is going to be different for everybody depending on where you are in your step family journey. Right? If you are a brand new stepmom, then this might look like trying to figure out how to get settle into your role as a stepmom. If you're a stepmom veteran, this might look like what you're doing in your career, right? It really depends on where you're at in your journey. And the beautiful thing about the work that I facilitate is that it is beneficial. These questions are relevant no matter where you are in your journey. Okay. So you know, another thing to keep in mind is that when you do start journaling these out, try not to censor yourself, okay? Try not to answer them correctly. There is no correct way to answer it, okay? The only wrong way to do it is not to do it or to try to censor yourself and try to make it the right way. <laughs> and, you know, once you've spent some time journaling these out, please, please, please feel free to touch base with me on Instagram at the Step Queen. And let me know what you've discovered. Let me know if you had any breakthroughs. Let me know if you had any like big aha moments and you're like, holy smokes. Uh, let me know if you're like, you know what? This is way out to left field. This has nothing to do with my life. <laughs> okay. I love to hear it all. I, I love to hear it all. So don't be shy. Send me a message at the Step Queen uh, so we can chat about it. And I really look forward to hearing from you. I really look forward to hearing what comes up for you when you do this. 
So I hope you have a lovely week, my queen, and I will see you really soon. I hope this episode got your wheels turning and showed you just how powerful you are. I would invite you to take 30 seconds and tap subscribe to this podcast. When you subscribe to the podcast, then rest assured you will never miss an episode. And in no time, spinning your wheels will be a thing of the past. Thank you for listening and subscribing. And if you enjoyed this episode, it would mean the absolute world to me if after you subscribed, You jumped on over and left me a five-star review and better yet, a written review. I am on a mission to let every mom and stepmom know that you can create the life of your dreams. And I need your help to change the world. The world needs us. Thank you so much for subscribing and leaving me a five-star review. I will see you next week, same time, same place. For more behind the scenes action and to get really up close and personal with me and our beautiful step family, jump on over to Instagram and follow me at the step queen. Don't be shy. Send me a DM. Tag me in your posts. Tag me in your stories. Let me know what you're up to and what about the podcast has been blowing your mind. I cannot wait to get to know you better and Instagram is my jam. I love you so much. I love you so much. Make it rain, girlfriend.